what you're looking at here is a computer generated force versus time graph. Now that should sound familiar because as you just found out, impulse is force times time. What you're going to see in this second video is forces are never really constant in real life. So that's kind of been the um, half-truth or lie that's been supplied so far in our physics class. So when you thought about the equation F net equals MA, a net force does cause a mass to accelerate. But the thing is, if you push on something, you're not actually going to push on it with the same force the whole time. Forces aren't constant in real life, just like nobody can run a constant 3 meters per second. You're going to speed up or slow down as you go along. Nobody can supply a constant 50 newton force. You speed up or you push harder or push less at different times. So let me explain what's going on in this graph to you. The green graph is the computer-generated data of an egg hitting the wall. So the green graph from that earlier video is made by the egg hitting the wall. Now you might think that wall stays there, and so obviously it just supplies an instant force, stops the egg. But actually if you notice in the graph, this kind of gap right here is how long it takes the wall to stop the egg. And it's a very short amount of time, so each of these boxes looks like it represents 0.1 seconds. And this gap up here spans about 0.1 second. That means it took the wall 0.1 seconds to stop that egg. And if you were to rewatch that starting video, you notice that one side of the egg hits the wall, the back of the egg is actually still moving, and that's why the egg gets squished together. So that egg does take time to stop. That wall does not instantly stop the egg. And you'll notice that for the first little bit right here, there was a one force applied and there's a little more force applied, and then more and more and more and more and more, and then you had your most force applied, and it is negative here, so I guess technically it's the least force applied. And then you had a little less force applied, less, 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 until the egg had stopped and there was no more force from the wall. So that wall, even though it's just a wall sitting there, it doesn't supply a constant force. The next thing is the bed sheet, this red graph here, and you can very clearly see that the force supplied by the bed sheet starts out low, gets bigger, 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 then smaller, 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 zero when the egg stops. The point here is, in real life situations, there are never constant forces. If you were to graph the amount of force at different times, it's going to be different at every time. There aren't real constant forces in life, just like there aren't frictionless surfaces or balls falling without air resistance. Forces are not constant, and it always takes some amount of time to speed something up or slow it down applying a force. Big takeaway, in real life, forces are not constant. All right, this slide got messed up a little bit when I transferred it to my iPad where I make the videos, but we can make it. So force time graphs. Real forces are not constant. Big takeaway here. Um, this separates it out kind of nicer than the um, real data. This is a drawing. This last slide was real data. When you throw an egg at a wall, um, the egg gets a big force from that wall over a very small time. When you throw the egg at the bed sheet, the egg gets a small force from the wall spread out over a long time. This thing that we're talking about, impulse, which right now, like I said, is best thought of as like your ability to stop something over a time or speed something up over a time. So your impulse is the area under the curve, just like displacement is the area under the curve on a velocity graph. What's interesting here is if you were to take the time to divide up both of these into shapes and find all of this area here when the egg hits the wall, so if we find the area for the egg hitting the wall, divide that up into little tiny rectangles and triangles and find that area, and then we were to find the area of the egg hitting the bed sheet, so if we find this area here, what we would find is that they're the same. The egg has to go from whatever its initial velocity is, so vi 
greater than zero, to its final velocity, which is zero. We know it stops. So it requires the same stopping power, as long as you threw the egg at the same speed both times, it requires the same stopping power to stop that egg. When it hits the wall, the egg gets a big force over short time. So if you're thinking about area, big force multiplied short time. When the egg hits the bed sheet, small force multiplied by big time. So both graphs have the same area, which means there's the same change in momentum. Now momentum, this thing that I'm calling momentum, we'll talk about more later, but all momentum is, is your mass times your velocity. Uh, P is momentum. We'll talk more about that later. But you have the same change in momentum, so same change in velocity, because their mass is same egg both times, same change in velocity. For the egg thrown at the wall, we squeeze its stopping into a short time, which means we need a big force, and therefore the egg breaks. When we throw the egg against the bed sheet, we spread its stopping out over a long time, which means we can use a small force, and the egg survives. Smaller your time, bigger your force to stop something has to be. Longer time it takes, smaller your force to stop something can be. And, second big takeaway, impulse is the area under the curve on a force time graph. So when you write this note down, because I circle it, it's obviously important, I want you to add to it, impulse is area under the curve on a force time graph. Graph. Impulse is area under the curve on a force time graph. Otherwise, you might think impulse is the area under any curve. Let's look at some examples of how we can use this. Think about a boxing match. One where you've got professionals using boxing gloves. Now think about a street fight, one where you've got amateurs using their fists. Last year in my CP class, I asked students if they thought it would hurt more to get hit with a boxing glove by the same person, or would it hurt more to get hit with a bare fist by the same person? So same person wearing the boxing glove hits you, and they take off the boxing glove, they hit you. Um, which one do you think would hurt more? And every student said, you know, I think the boxing glove will hurt more. If you want, tomorrow in class, while I'm not going to hit anybody, I think I can convince you that the boxing glove hurts less. But let me try to do it with physics, and maybe tomorrow I can give you an example. With the bare fist, your fist meets their face very quickly, very short time. Which means when you hit their face and your fist stops, it takes a big force because it was a very short time to stop your fist. So if you hit someone barefisted, it takes a lot of force from their face to make your fist stop because it happens in a very short time. So I get my hands close enough to the mic to do this. It's just a sudden thing. But if you hit someone with a boxing glove on, there is some space. So like your actual fist is, say, right here. So there is all of, switching colors so you can see it, there is all of this space between your fist and their face. And because there's a lot of space there, your fist covers some distance and takes a longer time to stop. And since your fist takes a longer time to stop when you're wearing a boxing glove, you can have, or their face, gives a smaller force to stop your fist. Longer time to stop your fist, smaller force from their face. Over here with the bare fist, very short time to stop your fist, very big force from their face, which means they get hurt more when you're not wearing the boxing glove than when you are. 